G'day, I'm Scott from Integra Marine here on the Sunshine Coast. Uh, we build custom lightweight sports fishing vessels, particularly flat skiffs, a bit of a passion of ours. Uh, I've been doing this style of boat building here on the coast for eight to nine years now, uh, along with some other uh, bits and pieces that we've, we've run through as well. Um, basically, yeah, we've, we've just got a love for things that are different. We, we love the flat skiffs, uh, the style of fishing that it, it offers to a lot of anglers works really well here. Uh, we've got some great fisheries locally as well. So um, we run the, the vacuum infusion process uh, for a couple of reasons. It, number one, it produces a product that you just you can't get from a hand lamination side of things. Um, much lighter, stronger, quieter on the water, more efficient. Um, you know, that, that really comes into its own when you're on the water, on the flats, or, or trying to sneak up on the fish uh, to a certain degree. Um, it also allows for uh, a bit of a cheaper package overall with lower horsepower to, to perform similarly to a, uh, a hand laminated boat. Um, but yeah, it's, it's just, we enjoy it because it's, it's something a bit different to what a lot, a lot of other guys are offering. So this is our new 5.2 metre flat skiff. Uh, this one's hull number two. There's something pretty cool with this one. Uh, it's going through as a, a bit of a coast watch build for Dave Granville. Uh, hull number one made its way up to Cairns for a barra guide up, up there, Kim Anderson. Um, we flew up there a couple of weeks after he took delivery and, and helped him commission it and uh, just had a blast fishing on it. Um, so now we're, we'll get this one underway and it's going to be a pretty cool uh, journey to, to see it come together and, and work in with Coast Watch. Uh, so we did the first uh, hull, hull number one for Kim uh, in survey for him, being a, a fishing guide, a barra guide. Um, we did a bit of extensive water testing with it uh, and kind of blew our minds with, with what we came up with. Um, you know, initially we ran it with a 15 horsepower Mariner, just an old clapped out two stroke to potter from the boat ramp around to the, uh, the pontoon for the stability test. And we were planning at 5.8 knots, which, you know, was laughing. We were just, we were so happy. Uh, we, we took it for a, a few more test runs after that, not expecting to get any, any, you know, water speed records, but with one guy on board, full fuel batteries, and the 15, we were doing 21 knots. Um, so based on that, you know, a, uh, a 40, 50, 60, or even a 70 on the back of this boat, uh, we'll see it performing really well, you know, at a 40 knot boat, very comfortably, uh, but keeping that package price down and, and efficiency where it needs to be. So what we typically expect on a 5.2 metre boat is to be in the range of a 90 or a 115 uh, four stroke on the back of it to, to get the speeds that you're after. and. You know, we'll, we'll see comparable speeds out of these boats with a, a 60 or a 70 on the back of it. So, um, yeah, very happy with the performance figures that we've get, we're getting out of them and also the efficiency as well. So when we were in Cairns, we, uh, we spent a day on the water with Kim and basically put it through its paces uh, as, a, as a, a skiff or as a flat skiff. And I guess one thing that really took our breath away was the fishability. Uh, the stability of the boat was phenomenal, uh, which is what we designed it to, to do, but it, even then it still you know, really impressed us with what we could, could get out of it. You know, we could have three or four guys on the boat all casting at the same time and just stress-free fishing, you know, solid in the water, um, and, and not have to worry about who was where and things like that. It's just plenty of clean, uncluttered deck space, and, which is what we set out to do. So it ticked all those boxes, and yeah, we're super happy with how, how it turned out. So we, we have opted to go down the path of vacuum infusion, in particular foam sandwich, uh, over traditional hand lamination methods. So, you know, wet layup, chopper gun layup, and that sort of thing. What it allows is a much cleaner environment for myself and my team in the workshop here, uh, lower emissions, but I guess the main benefit is uh, uncompromised strength that you just, you, or end weight, that you just won't see out of those traditional layup methods. Um, you know, we're able to heavily reduce the weight going into a boat, but maintain really, really good strength with different materials available to us on the market now, um, which in turn means lower horsepower, 
and lower cost. So, so really excited to be doing this build with Dave and, and Coast Watch and um, going through the journey and the steps with you guys at home and, and showing you how it all comes together. What we've got here is our vinyl ester infusion resin. It, it's a specifically formulated resin for the infusion process. And it's got a, a thinner consistency to your standard laminating resin. And then also being a vinyl ester, uh, it allows for a lot better strength throughout the lamination process as well. Um, with this resin, we use, our, we use a, uh, a catalyst that's formulated for this resin and we vary the ratio of the catalyst depending on laminate thickness, temperature, time of the day, flow rate and cure time. Once we've got our catalyst or our ratio amount in the resin, uh, we give it a good mix, make sure it's mixed through thoroughly. Uh, it will cross-link to a certain degree, which means that the catalyst will jump across to different mole uh, molecules on the resin, so, but we always like to make sure we get it mixed nice and thoroughly. So once we've mixed our catalyst and resin together, uh, the next step is to open up the resin lines or the resin inlet lines to the job. And you can see once we release that clamp that with the vacuum process, it wants to draw the materials through. So in this case, it's the resin uh, and you can see it running through the, in, the inner uh, inlet ring. It's a good opportunity to keep an eye on making sure we've got no air ingress and no air leaks throughout the, the bag, the, the resin lines, and ensure we've got good flow. So on each job we, we work on stages. Uh, you can see here we've got an inner ring of resin line and an outer ring. Uh, that, that stage or the number of stages that we open up will vary depending on the shape of the job, the size and the distance. So for example, a 40 foot hull you know, we might use half a dozen stages rather than two um, on these boats, not being super wide. Two is perfect and allows for a nice consistent resin flow. So we always keep an eye on inlet hoses uh, for air leaks, making sure we've got nothing coming in that shouldn't be coming in and, and basically just resin entering the job. The idea is that you don't have any air in the job and that's the benefit of infusion. You can see here the resin's gone from the inner tubes or inner flow tubes and it's now reaching the, the secondary stage or the outer tubes so it's now time to open up the next inlet and allow the resin to progress past that second stage. We calculate the amount of resin that's going to be used on each job depending on the size of the job the laminate thickness, the core thickness. So we've got a little bit of a formula that we work with. So we always have a couple of spare pails of resin ready to go, just in case we decide we want to slow it down or f speed it up, put a little bit more resin through or that sort of thing, just to make sure we've got good saturation through the entire product. Now that we're starting to get the resin up the top side of the hull here, uh, we just keep an eye on how much more distance we've got to go versus how much more resin we need to put into the job. Um, we don't want to cut the, or turn the, the valves or the inlet valves off too early and run the risk of a drier laminate towards the top or pulling excess resin out that we, we shouldn't be. So it's all about the calculation of the, the volume of resin going into the job and we keep a close eye on that throughout the process. With our vacuum pump setup, we run a catch pot system. So that acts as a bit of a safety barrier for us that if we put more resin in the job than what we should, it'll fill up that catch pot before it runs the risk of going through the entire vacuum pump and that's not ideal. But once our resin reaches the top of the job, uh, in this case it's the flange, uh, we allow a bit of extra glass in the laminate to act as a bit of a buffer before we reach the vacuum lines. Um, this will help slow that resin flow right down and ensure that there's an even saturation throughout the whole job.